Hello, one all. You, Doctor Stone, Chapter Two Hundred Five, Universe of Zeros and Ones. And I've got to say, I was wrong. I was really, really wrong. I said in my last video that Sai was this genius mathematician who fled the Nanami Corp, who fled Japan to come to India, where he could study true math, math that really pushed him to his limits. But no, 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 no. As it turns out, Sai is not a big fan of math, despite the fact that he can do tangent multiplication in his head almost instantly. I mean, he says almost anyone could do that given enough time, but uh, no, they really couldn't. I mean, Jen gives up almost instantly. Kohaku was thinking about fish and meat, so yeah, she's not going to find the answer anytime soon. Chrome? Chrome comes reasonably close. I mean, he gets like four digits into this, which is far more than I could get. And Senku's doing something in his head. I don't actually know what it is, but eventually Senku would find the solution. We all know that. And when Sai is too to realize how utterly brilliant he was, he ran off to go tell the master that Sai is a bona fide genius. And then we get to see little baby Ryu's first words. Desire. <laughs> Yes, because even at that young age, he desired all things in the world. He realized that Sai could be used to make all his dreams come true. All the dreams he had, even though he was still in diapers. <laughs> I love it, I love it. And of course, their father isn't all that much better, realizing that Sai's powers can be used to become the company's dedicated actuary and make them millions and millions of dollars. But Sai just really, really isn't interested in that and just wants to play video games. And what's more, make video games. Ah, a man after my own heart. But when Ryu hears this, he's a little confused about why Sai just doesn't do both. Become the company's CEO, the CEO of one of the largest companies in the freaking world, and then just make him play video games in all his spare time, you know? All the spare time that CEOs have. <laughs> yeah, that probably wouldn't work out. That probably wouldn't work out. And Sai isn't as greedy as Ryu. He just wants to focus on the games, the things he loves, and program them. But Ryu just keeps trying to drag him back in, you know? Trying to use his math powers to calculate the optimal racing lines, or calculate the fluid dynamics on the sale of the ship he's building. And after a while, she gets too much, and Sai flees. He goes to India where he can become a programmer, where he can truly, truly focus on the code. Only to then wake up 3,000 years in the future and be told that there won't be any machines, any computers for a good 5 to 10 years. And Sai is just so utterly, utterly heartbroken, feeling there is no place for him in this stone age without technology, without the computers he needs to write code. But then he realizes, wait a minute, I don't actually need a computer to write code. And he starts filling the walls of his room with code, which... Oh yeah, I get that. I definitely get that. I mean, I don't actually get what he's writing because he's writing in machine code. We'll get that in a second. But when it comes to you know, writing code down on paper when you don't have a computer, I do that all the time. It is a good way to figure out, you know, what's wrong, to really visualize the code. It's a good way to fill time when you're away from a computer. And actually, during my last semester when I was getting a master's degree, I spent basically every single class not listening to teachers at all and just focusing on the code I was writing down the paper in front of me, trying to figure out what's wrong with it, trying to figure out what, why it wasn't working correctly. Oh, that was an interesting semester. That was an interesting semester. Almost drove me insane. Almost drove me insane. Yeah, kids, don't go to grad school. It will destroy your mind. And I'm going back in the fall. Yay! And also when it comes to Sai, just, you know, working on this literally all throughout the night, skipping meals. I I've done that too. Sadly enough, I've done that too. Oh god, most famous time was at one point, it was 11 o'clock at night, I'm like, you know what, I just forgot what's wrong with my code, I'll open up my computer, I can solve it in 5 minutes, and then when I looked up, it was 6am and the sun was starting to rise, so, yeah, that's actually fairly common among coders, we get really, really lost in our work, but when it comes to what Sai is doing here, writing it all out in machine code, that's, that's next level right there, that is utterly, utterly next level, I mean, I took one class of machine code, and... All I really learned that was how to write code that, you know, did basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, stuff like that. This is just so utterly, utterly beyond me, and probably utterly beyond 99% of programmers out there. And I don't think there are many, if any, programmers who still work in machine code, unless they want to truly, truly optimize their work, because even though machine code is almost completely incomprehensible, if you truly understand what's going on in it, if you can truly read the language of machine code, then you can make your code run as efficiently as possible. While higher level languages like C are much more legible, much easier to read, but then they need to be translated into machine code, and some things are sometimes lost in translation, and it's not as efficient. Plus, translation can take time and can slow down the code. And this can extend even further. C++, C++, C Sharp, and Python are all languages that basically convert themselves into C, which converts itself into machine code. So yeah, the rule of thumb, more or less, is that the more readable your code is, the more it looks like English, the less efficient it actually is, and the less control you truly have over what's happening in it. Though I will say that size attempts to program all of Dragon Quest on his walls in machine code was definitely, definitely insane. And machine code is just so lengthy that even everything he's written is probably only a fraction of what he actually needs to fully write out the game. And 
it would have been much, much more efficient if actually written, you know, converter, basically converting machine code into Python or some other language, which could actually be read. And they could have written the rest of the code in Python, C, C++, any other languages that are much, much more readable. I mean, even writing a machine code just in general doesn't make a whole bunch of sense because, because other programmers are going to be arrived and they're probably not going to, you know, make whole new programming languages. They're going to make languages similar to the ones used in the past. So yeah, if Sai had written all this out in Python instead, he probably could have actually written the entirety of Dragon Quest in a single night on his walls. And, you know, it would have been much, much more readable. But whatever. This is how they showed Sai's overwhelming brilliance, and I freaking loved it. And this tells Sank what they can do. They can actually bring in the age of computers. Somehow, some way. I mean, we see behind Senku, there's everything from switchboards with glass tubes all the way up to modern day smartphones. So I'm actually really curious what exactly Senku is going to start off with. I mean, I mean, Senku said they're going to make an NES, one of the oldest gaming systems out there. But I'm curious if they're actually going to make it as compact as it appears here. I kind of feel like it's going to fill up half the ship just being, you know, full of glass tubes and everything because integrated circuits are very, very hard to make. But, you know, they have a programmer here, so even if the hardware isn't entirely perfect, the software can make up for it. Curious, very, very curious. Also, I didn't have a chance to say this before, but I absolutely freaking love Chelsea meeting Sai and Sai just being so overwhelmingly touched that this girl likes him just for who he is, not because he's some genius mathematician, that who he is is good enough for her. Oh, it was so adorable and at the same time so sad because, you know, Sai's family has always just wanted him for his brain, for his mathematical abilities, and now he finally meets someone who just likes him for who he is. Oh, that was cute. Possible ship down the road? Maybe. Maybe. That would be a... Very, very interesting ship. I'm curious about that. But anyway, uh, thoughts for next chapter. Uh, they said they're going to basically make computers. So I'm definitely guessing gaming systems, gaming consoles as well. And while the, you know, his first goal was Dragon Quest, I actually kind of see it more being Pac-Man. I mean, Pac-Man would be much, much simpler to code. Even I've coded Pac-Man in the past. Not that hard. Actually, I programmed Pac-Man with deep learning AIs that found the best way to avoid being eaten by the ghost. Oh, I love Pac-Man, and I can really see that, you know, fitting this series, fitting this theme. Say Pac-Man, or I guess Mrs. Pac-Man, maybe Suka, with her double helmet going around trying to collect all the science goods, the science bits, while being chased by, you know, Zeno, Stanley, Ibarra, Sukasa, Hyoga, all the people who try to chase her and fail throughout the series, basically showing how Suka's speed and quick thinking allowed her to outrun and outsmart all the bad guys throughout this series. Oh, I love that, absolutely freaking love it. And let me think else down below, uh, what do you think the first attempt at computers are going to be? I mean, computers are basically, you know, binaries, logic gates, all that fun stuff. And I'm curious how they're actually going to build it in the Stone Age. I mean, are they, are they just going to start with Senku, with uh, Sai? Because I feel like they could use an engineer here. I really, truly feel like they could use an engineer here. I mean, Sai, don't be wrong, is definitely good with the software side, but the hardware side... I kind of feel like they need someone who's, you know, more of an expert on that. Kosky, Kosky's great, but explaining to him what integrated circuit is would take a very, very long time. So, very, very curious. Link all down below. What do you think's happen next? What size role going to be moving forward? What's the first video game they're going to make? How are Kohaku, Chrome, and the rest of them going to react to freaking video games? And uh, what's the plan moving forward? How long are they going to stay in India? Link all down below. Be sure to like, subscribe to the next video. And until then, peace!